great to be here, man. I, I didn't want to come because you know me, I hate to travel. Once I once the season's over, I just like to stay in one place. But it's definitely worth the effort to come out here, see the old guys, talk about the old times, talk about how great we used to be, Ramona, how great we think we still are. <laughs> and just to see everybody, it just really makes you appreciate. We all treasured our times together with Showtime and putting on our Laker uniform. But when you see your old teammates and your old peers again, you know, just very emotional. We all have families, of course, immediate families, but this is another version of family. We're all older now. We're in our 60s, 70s, some of us. Yeah, life goes by fast. Your career goes by in the blink of an eye, it feels like. So any chance we need to get to uh, have a chance to get together and uh, see each other, we need to start doing that now because you see we're getting older and you can't take anything for granted anymore. So I saw some videos floating around of a practice or a walkthrough that happened the other day. Uh, the key word uh, Ramona said there was walk, walk through. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they got us on the court just to go through dummy drills, very slow speed. You didn't have to adjust your camera if you were watching that because it was an actual speed. It wasn't slow motion. It was actual <laughs> speed we were going. So I saw Coop made a shot. Did Was Riles intense? Like, I can't picture Riles anything but intense. Oh, yeah, he was very intense as usual. Laughing at us, of course, like yeah. everybody else, but... He wanted to keep the practice going longer and not be, to being the typical rounds. And Magic said, nope, that's it. We're done. <laughs> <laughs> Michael, who's the, who's the guy or guys that you were the most surprised to see at this reunion? Obviously, obviously, we expected all the Hall of Famers to be here. We all know who they are, of course. Worthy, Magic, uh, Kareem, of course. Um, Coop will be in the Hall of Fame next year, I believe. Byron, of course, we expected to come. Rambus, we, we knew was going to be here because Linda helped put this all together, of course. But then, of course, all these scrubs that uh, helped just carry the bags of uh, all the superstars. <laughs> Those are the guys I was happy to see. People like Clay Johnson that a lot of people have forgotten about. Clay Johnson, of course. I think he was with the Showtime Lakers for a minute. Uh, Billy Thompson, no relation, but he was here. He was a big-time minister in Florida now. Um, Larry Spriggs is here. Obviously, Bob McAdoo, uh, another Hall of Famer, is here. Jim Brewer is here. So it's good to see those type of guys who, because we all think of the Showtime, we think of the superstar guys, uh, along with Kurt Rambis and A.C. Green. Those are the main guys. But on the periphery, guys on the periphery like uh, me and the rest of the guys, those are the guys who really enjoyed seeing, that, uh, who are not around Crypto.com Arena a lot. So, Michael, when um, I have this theory that Facebook has sort of killed the high school reunion because you already – the reason you go to the reunion is you want to find out what everyone became and what, who, who, what nerd became really successful and what hot girl got ugly and, you know, whatever it is. Uh, but you guys are probably not, like, catching up on Facebook. I bet there were some surprises with, like, with – certain people that you played with and what they did with their lives. Like who has, who has an interesting life now that you, that people would may not know about. I don't know. There's really nobody because like you said, even though we don't see guys, we, we can find our guys through social media, texting, whatever, uh, because we can hear from certain guys. So what's so-and-so doing. So we kind of knew what Jim Jones was doing. He was a, one of the radio voices of the Cleveland Cavaliers, uh, Larry Spriggs, uh, the guys were keeping up with him. What's so we kind of knew Bob McAdoo. Bob McAdoo, of course, we knew he was with the Miami Heat for a long time. So even though we hadn't seen each other in years, now with uh, technology and the way to communicate with each other and, and get access to each other, we were really surprised to see that uh, some guy was doing something that we had never heard of before. So those kind of days, Ramona, like you said, are over with because of technology. Uh, Michael Thompson's with us. He's in Maui at the Lakers Showtime reunion, which just looks like an absolute blast. Uh, Michael's been sending me videos um, over the past three days, and every time I see one, I go, man, this is cool. Um, Michael, what's been your favorite event or part of the reunion so far? Oh, that's easy, man. Last night, you get the, you get the uh, video of Stu Lance, Stu Lance on the dance floor. Oh, not only that, I, I picked hey. up on it. I don't know how many people did. They flew in Jeffrey Osborne to do a concert for you guys? Yeah, Jeffrey Osborne is here the whole week. Not just flew in, but he came in for the whole week since Sunday, like everybody else. And he's been involved in all the activities because he is part of Showtime. He's part of the family. And uh, to hear his voice up there again, uh, and he put on a great performance last night for uh, – for our party, our Showtime party, and uh, it was just magical time. And um, we got to get him back singing the anthem, man. The fact that he's not singing the anthem to start playoff series is just uh, that's just inexcusable. So he is the voice. He is the singing voice of Showtime, of the Lakers, really. So whenever there's a big event, Jeffrey Osborne needs to be back at Crypto.com Arena to kick off any big game. Well, he's in, and I've seen him live three or four times, and he's just great in, in a live setting. Um, Michael, you always tell me that, 
in your life experience that Magic Johnson and Pat Riley are two of the greatest leaders in the history of team sports. Does that transfer over to a reunion? Are Riles and Magic still kind of leading the way in something like this? That's great that you asked that question because that's exactly what they're doing. Uh, Magic is like the MC. He's yeah. like the John Ireland. You're, you're a great MC, Ireland. I always tell people that about you. You can lead any event, put you on a microphone. Magic the same way. He gets up and he speaks first. Uh, he tells people what's going on. Then Pat Riley will get up and he'll do his spiel and he'll talk about uh, bring back memories of certain and tell different stories and what we're going to do next. So he'll present some video. So exactly that is what exactly going on. Magic and Pat Riley are the spokespeople here. And uh, they do a they're two both excellent speakers. Magic, uh, I said that to my wife said last night, Magic is a great public speaker. And, of course, so is Pat Riley. Magic is so smooth on the mic. He reminds me a lot of you, Ireland. How much are guys talking about the HBO show Winning Time and the Laker Legacy thing uh, documentary that's on Hulu? Like, you're, You guys are, are sort of larger than life now. The Winning Time thing, we're not really talking about that. We've mentioned the, the Showtime, the Legacy thing a little bit. But we've just so been so enamored with talking about how things were so much fun in the 80s with each other and all the experiences we shared with each other. We're mostly talking about that, bringing up those kind of stories. Not so much talking about the HBO series or the thing that's going on on Hulu right now, but we're just talking about the good old times and uh, just enjoying around being around each other's company. I tell you, this is really special. It gets you choked up when we see each other. We've, we've each had to stand up in front of our gatherings and, and speak about our time and what it meant to each one of us to be a member of the Lakers, a member of the Showtime Lakers. And I just thank the Lakers for bringing me along and being a part of all this and such a privilege. And I talked about Magic Johnson. I told him he's the greatest leader that's ever put on a uniform, not only the way because of what he did on the floor, but because of the person he was off the floor. I mean, like I told him to his face and to a lot of people on the air or behind his back, uh, the way he treats people who come up to him, just anonymous people just want to see him and shake his hand. He's so respectful and so inviting to any and anyone who wants to come up and say hello to him. He takes time to say hello to anybody. And being around, as Isla and I, we travel and we see other players and we see how players can walk by their, their, their fans and not even acknowledge their existence. I've never seen Magic Johnson do that to anyone. That's how nice he is. And I commended him on being that kind of a leader and setting that kind of example for everybody who's been around him. Michael, I've seen two pictures. Two of the pictures you've sent me are you and Kareem. You're not bothering Kareem too much, are you? Has he, has he told you to get lost yet? I think I am bothering him too much because every time he sees me, he seems to duck behind somebody or go to the other side of the room. So, you know, I, I have so much respect and so much love for that guy. I, I get choked up. I get I'm, I'm intimidated just being around him just to say hello to him. That's how much he means to me because he was my idol growing up and I was a jungle boy in the Bahamas. And to be around him and, and Kareem is so inviting and so friendly and so nice. You know, people think thought he was aloof. And he was kind of a loner. And man, he might have been back in his uh, 30, 40, 30 years ago. But now, I mean, Kareem is the life of the party. He makes everybody around him feel so welcome. And just to be in his presence, man. Just, um, you know, like I always say, I know he's just another man, just another human being, just like everybody, just like the rest of us who are listening to us right now. But, you know, like when I was around Bill Russell, it just some people just leave you in awe, even though they're another human being just like you are. And that's how I feel when I'm around Kareem. And poor Kareem, every time I... I see him, you know, I just want to go touch, a, touch his cloak <laughs> and, and he tries to get away from me. But he's, he's been patient with me and he's putting up with my, uh, my idolatry this, this week. 